that four or five years ago. And, yes. And uh, you were the keynote speaker, and we didn't really have enough, didn't have uh, really time just to sit down and chat and talk and, uh, and uh, just just get to know you a little better. And of course, I read the materials here, but uh, I think back to that time. But to, but to go back, of course, right around the '68 Olympics, and. Uh, I, being an ex high school track coach, you know, I kind of follow. Oh, you uh, were follow track and that, and I, but uh, as much as I could uh, follow it at the time, this fellow by the name of Lee Evans always. <laughs> that name you read about him and that, and I can remember w watching watching your some of your meets and runs, and I always admired just how you ran. I don't know if that, but you explained yesterday about. The, your coach talking about the idea of re relaxing, mm -hmm. and when you said that, I could remember I back remember. years ago watching you run. And just that's how, this, that's how I always used to explain. It. It's like you know, like poetry in motion, and uh, and I think uh, from what you mentioned there about that idea of your coach emphasizing relaxing, that mm -hmm. that probably yeah, I had a uh, great coach, uh, <clears throat> Bud Winters at San Jose State University. And he was on an aircraft crew in World War II. Okay. And uh, his job was to get those uh, pilots to relax, to go out on another mission after seeing 20 planes go off, maybe 12 come back. All right. They lost eight of their buddies and they had to go out again in two hours. He had to get them to relax, get them to be, be confident and ready to go out and fight again. And so, he did a lot of research on relaxation, and he found that when you relax, you, you can do your best. Your body will, will flow. Every day, he, we had relaxation drills. And so he told us never to run 100%. He always run 95% effort, you know. And, and every time I had a, the, the tendency to want to go up to 100, I remember stay at 95. So I stayed relaxed, and sure enough, my competition would always get tired, and I just keep going. Uh, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Just listening to that, but the, yeah, relaxation the, delays the, fatigue. The, how they, how a person runs, and mm -hmm. you, you get beyond that, then it's a struggle. Yeah, you know, you're not, you're not yeah. a fluid, fluid mm -hmm. runner. But going back in your time, just an interesting on my part. You grew up in California. Yeah, I was born in California. And, and you and you started uh, probably competitive track from freshman year in high school. Yes. And, and ran all four years, and, uh, and then from there went to San Jose State. Now, yeah. uh, well, I, you know, the, I think I remember running in one competition and when I, as an uh, eighth grader. I remember the, the PE teacher came out one day and said, we're going to go to a competition at, at Washington High School, and we was going to run the 75 yard dash and the long jump in the 400 and the 75 I didn't you know I was a little skinny guy probably about 75 pounds <laughs> so speed is power power is speed so I, I didn't do anything in the 75 then in the long jump it was just horrible officiating I guess was, they got some high school students come out there the long jump and okay, they were just the they were just harassing the uh, uh, the competitors well, I said, well, I'm not going to long jump anymore. So when the 400 come around, and I won my heat of the 400, I think I ran 61. You know, I, I would That's as an eighth, eighth grader. <laughs> yes, an eighth grader. So that was my eighth grade time. <laughs> you know, then, I, you know, starting in high school, I had an older brother who was five years older than me. In 1959, he, he had ran 48.5 for 440. Okay. He had ran uh, 155 for 880 yard dash. I think he had ran 22 for 200. He was a great athlete. Big guy. He was much bigger. He was about 6'2". And uh, he was my hero, so I wanted to follow in his footsteps. That's why I went out for the track team. I couldn't do anything else. I, my first year of high school, I, must, I didn't weigh 90 pounds. So. Uh, in those days, they they put you in classification A, B, and C class. They added your name and your weight together, and they told me I was C class. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
your age and your That's weight. Stereotype, right? Yeah, or right yeah, your age and weight, man. I was a skinny guy, so um, I ran the C class six hundred and sixty, okay. six hundred and sixty yards C class, and I think I lost two races that year, and I ran. 129.2 for 660 yards as a 15-year-old kid. Okay. You know. <clears throat> then and, and as the years progressed, as I gained weight, I got faster. So by my junior year, I probably weighed about 140 pounds, 45 maybe. And I got fast, man. You know, I, I tied for third in the California State Meet. Uh, I ran uh, 440 yards, I ran 48-2, tied for third in the California State Meet. In California, they don't have different sections. If, if the school population is 400, you're going to run against a school that has 4,000. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one state meet. And most, I find out as I travel around the, in Alabama and places, they have 1A, 2A, 3A, you know, by going by sizes of the school, you know, population of the school for the different state meets. So in California, there's one one state meet, and and that race, I lost two races, and that was 1964. Okay. Yeah. Then 65, you know, I I gained probably 10 more pounds. I was weighing about 155 then. <clears throat> then I ran, I ran 46.9 for 440. My senior year in high school, got all these scholarships offers from all around the country. You know, Ohio State. But, but you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, think I stayed, stayed at home because my, you know, my my mother was a great fan of mine. When I was 15 years old, running the C Class 660, she was there at all my competition. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that, and that. so, you know, we was living in San Jose. San Jose State had a great reputation as a good track school because Tommy Smith was there. Right. And Bud Winnett was there. He was known as a great sprint coach. He had coached Ray Norton, Hal Davis. You know, Hal Davis from the 40s, Ray Norton in the 60s, and then Tommy Smith had had one more year when I came. And so well, He I, was the upperclassman then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And see, and so... I stayed at home in San Jose because you know my mother was there, and she could come watch me so run. Watch, watch you, watch mm -hmm. you participate and, mm -hmm. and run. Yeah, that's right. I didn't go anywhere. That family tie. That's, that's <laughs> yes, sir. <super. laughs> yeah. But, uh, now, just out of curiosity, I'm like, all right, of course, we always hear of San Jose State, and like you said, the reputation and track back at that time. Well, how successful was the team in the national competition and the NCAA's and that? Uh, the you, two while you were there. The two NC two A's that I ran in, we were third in nineteen well in nineteen sixty seven. I couldn't go because in those days, you know, if you were a freshman, you couldn't run varsity, you couldn't run with the big guys. Right. So I couldn't go the first year. But then the and then that was Tommy's last year. And I don't know, I think they took fourth that year with Tommy. Then in 68, this is my first year I ran the NCAA. I won it in lane eight. I ran 45.0 at Edwards Stadium at UC Berkeley. And that's still the stadium record. No one has never run faster. So that's been how many years now? Oh, uh, 45, 46 years. And I did it on a dirt track. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the old cinder track. Yeah, program. and it's synthetic yeah. now. Nobody still can beat that <laughs> that time in that stadium. <laughs> That's one stadium record I know I still have. Yeah, but I got kind of I had a smile on my face from reading reading information about your 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 career and how how they you you bridge that gap between running yards and, and meters, going to the meters. meters yeah. and, uh, I always remember you know, 440. I read that one in your bio about 440 yards, but Back then, it was it was the yard versus mm -hmm. the, the yeah, meters. but with the meters, it's, it makes it three tenths faster, you know, because it's a little bit shorter. Right? Yeah, it's a yard. bit shorter, yeah. But in in '68, uh, we took third in, okay. in the NC2A meet. I won the 400. We took second in the four by one. 
That's when USC had that war record team with O.J. Simpson, right. Lennox yeah, Miller, Fred Culler, and Earl McCullough. You know, Earl McCullough was a 13.2 high hurdler. Yeah, I can remember years ago, they, Southern Cal was power and track, Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, then, mm -hmm. of course, the, the big relays, you had the pin relays in the East and the Drake mm -hmm. relays. And, and then and the, the West, West, West Coast West Coast relays. Uh, and the West the Coast Fresno, relays. Fresno, California, <laughs> man. That was my hometown. I was yeah. born in Fresno. Okay. And so I loved running there. I never got tired in the race. I, t I tried to convince Bud. I said, let me run the 800. I always knew I could break the world record for the 800. It was only 144.9. You know, and yeah. I proved it in 68. I broke the world record for 600 meters. The world record was 116. So I ran 114.3. Yeah, I can, I can remember and, reading about that. And I, I could walk, I could run 30 meters the last... 200 yeah, yeah. and still break the world record. Yeah. But Bud, he would never let me do it. You know, so, and I, and I would ask, I said, Coach, let me run the 800 this me. So what he did was, like, this is his desk is here. And I walk in his office. And he put a picture of me beating uh, Ronnie Ray Smith and Sam Davis. Ronnie Ray run 9.900 9 meters. <laughs> Sam Davis run 10 one, <laughs> and I'm beating them in the 200 meters. He yeah. said he looks at you were a sprinter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. But you're the fastest person here, so this is what yeah, yeah, you, you know you beating these guys run nine nine. But but just out of curiosity, the the, the, the distance 600 meters has come up. How popular was that race? Was that more of an well, indoor you know, race or? Uh, it's the in, indoors, you know. I always ran the 600 yards was most of the time, but when they had those 160, those small tracks, correct. 160 yards, I ran the 600 because the, to run a 400 there is just, whoever gets the lead's gonna win. You know, if, if you and I were close together in time, who have gotten in front? It would have been impossible for the guy behind to to overtake because the track was so so tight. So I always run the 600. It was more fun, and I'd looked at it as training for the 400 for outdoors. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, in '69 we won it. I was captain of the team, and we won the NC2A championship 1969. Okay. San Jose State. Where was that held? In uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. we, we won it. Uh, Kansas was second. Uh, I can't remember how many points, but we won it. Back, uh, another question I had too, uh, Lee. Back when uh, you were in college and, and, and trying out for the Olympics, at that time, was the Olympics a one shot deal where you had one meet to determine? Yes, that was that's, traditionally you had the America had one type, one Olympic trials, but in '68 they we, they ended up having two because they were afraid we, the black athletes might boycott. Okay, we had one Olympic trial in Los Angeles. Olympic trials were supposed to be just Los Angeles. That's why we knew we had in '68 we had a proposed boycott. You know, we was fighting against segregation, right. and discrimination in America as a whole, and we threatened to boycott. And, but in Los Angeles, all the black, black athletes from across the country voted to go to the games. So we ran the trials in Los Angeles. Then they said we should report by a certain date to Lake Tahoe, California for the high altitude training camp. Because Mexico City was at seven thousand right, feet, yeah. you know, you could yeah. just go from San Jose go there. You, yeah. There's no air. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to uh, acclimatize ourselves by training. We trained there, and we, we and I would say we cheated. They said that the IOC had a rule. They said each country could not be in the high altitude with this with the Olympic coaches for only one month. Now what they did, what the U.S. did, they got two sets of coaches who were not Olympic coaches. So you could go there and train. So I was two months up there in the, in the mountain. Okay. I was there two months. I, I can't say it helped you more because scientists have proved it takes 21 days to get acclimated for the high altitude where your body will grow new yeah. red blood cells to carry oxygen to the muscles. But uh, we spent two months there, 
and but some athletes came late, but I I was there the first day that said I could go. You know, it was about a three hour, three and a half hour drive from San Jose to Lake Tahoe, California for me. I drove up there and I I trained. You know, I really got strong. Well, I think that says something about it. What I was. Marge, you remember how much, how hard you worked, and I was. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't lazy. Your, how much the work was? You got there first and stayed to last. And, yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I wasn't uh, a lazy guy. But speaking of the uh, Olympic trials, one one instant years ago, and I wasn't, I was just a kid myself, but I can remember the, the Olympic selection of the Olympic team was a one meet. You know, one time. Yeah, that's how it was. Her Harrison, before Dillard. Harrison Dillard was the premier hurdler mm -hmm. in the world, no question. In the trials, he hit a hurdle. But, but the thing I admired about Harrison was, he came back and entered the hundred meters, and that was not his race. And he won the Olympic. Uh, yeah, won the gold medal. I met him several times. Have, and did you meet? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still he's still alive. He lives in Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, he he went to Lowell. Baldwin Walls College in, uh, uh, in Cleveland, and, mm -hmm. but he was the premier hurdler. I can remember how many he would went in a row, like like you. How many meets, how many races you won in a row? What was your construct? Uh, con uh, well, I, I I really never counted how many in a row I win, but I know my senior year in high school I didn't lose any races. My first year of university I didn't lose any races. My second year in university, I must have lost two races late okay. in the season in Europe. Yeah, I was, you know, I didn't, I was tired. I couldn't, couldn't mentally get myself up to race really hard. I lost two races, and that was in 67. In 68, I lost two races. I, I could have been undefeated, but I was training Ron Freeman, a guy from Arizona State. Okay. He was a friend of mine, so we were roommates. So I'm he and he took the first Olympic trials. He took eighth. I trained him for two months, and the second Olympic trials he took third. He made the team, okay. and he end, he ended up making winning the bronze medal in uh, Mexico City. So we come off the curve, and we were together, and I wanted to give him some confidence. So I just let him win. I could have. <laughs> yeah. I could have struck down and got by him. Being a nice but, guy that Yeah, day, huh? I did it twice. It gave him some confidence, you know. Okay. You know, I was right there. It wasn't like he was up there. We was right there together. I just let him burst the tape. Yeah. You know, I, I was some... I, I always enjoyed that. I mean, you mentioned something that I think is, is, is really something great, is, is when, when athletes get together and, 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 and in training, it's a cooperative effort. Mm -hmm. Competitors on the track, mm -hmm. But I can remember two uh, individuals that did that, uh, Rafer Johnson, you know, the decathlete, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, CK, CK Yang. Yang. Oh, yeah. you know, oh boy, they would go at it, you yeah. know. I know the dog, story. dog during the meet, but they trained together, together. and that cooperative effort mm -hmm. that, that's so often, we, we know it exists, but a lot of people don't know how athletes at times. And it seemed to be more prep, obviously, in track. It really hit me a lot because, yeah. you know, normally, <clears throat> No one could never train with me at San Jose because, you know, I could handle really hard work. You know, I could run the 800 and 148, 147.8, and then I could run 20.4 and then 200. So that's a, it's a long, big range. So it was difficult to train with me. So I was always leading every interval right. that I ran yeah. at Channel San Jose State. But Ron Freeman was a talented guy. In high school, we were the same year. I ran 46.9, he ran 46.6 in high school. He ran faster than I did in okay. high school. And plus, in the 800, he ran 153 in high school. I only ran 158 in high school for the 800. So when we got together, I saw that he had endurance like I did. He could, okay. or he could handle my training. So sometimes he leads, sometimes I lead, and I couldn't believe it. I'm running behind somebody in training, <laughs> and uh, so that was interesting for me that I, I had find some, found somebody who could handle my training handle schedule. Yeah, be a mm -hmm. so we did my training schedule before I went up there. Bud Winters gave me the schedule, what to do. I knew what to do, but I said, Coach, give me what I should do the last two and a half weeks to, for my speed to be there. So, but he just wrote it down, and I left his office and drove up on top of the mountain. 
and uh, I remember doing that. And uh, Freeman did well. I was happy for him. He, it's interesting that some of the names you're bringing up here, I'll like bring back memories when I can remember uh, those individuals competing. But, uh, uh, but, but looking at uh, another thing, too, that's kind of curious uh, on, on my part, uh, you had your collegiate career. Obviously, but then you had the opportunity to run internationally. Oh yeah, know. I did that um, every summer. Every okay, every summer you uh, had the opportunity. I was 19 years old. I loved it. I mean, the first time I won the national championships, I, I won. You know, I didn't know. I you know, I was 19. I, I had never been on the airplane before. I had never slept in a hotel. And all of a sudden, my, <laughs> I got on the airplane. I remember, and I was. Up in the bin, looking. And my coach said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm looking for the parachute." You know. <laughs> <laughs> you, know I, you know, I had never been anywhere. I had never been out of my hometown, and we was flying to New York. I couldn't believe it, man. I'm going to New York. The the national championships was in Randall's Island. And my coach told me to sit down. He said, "No parachutes on this airplane." I said, "But on television, they always have parachutes." <laughs> You know, I'm watching those World War II movies, right? <laughs> the ever-ending education one goes yeah, through yeah, as a yeah, youngster yeah, and yeah, yeah. new adventures. I just turned 19 in February, and then here I am in June. I'm, uh, you know, I've been 19 for just about four months, I guess. And uh, and I'm flying to New York, so I, I sit down. I didn't like it. You know, I, I said, what if the airplane's going to crash? I just got to crash with the airplane, you know. So we arrived in New York safely, and... Uh, I won it, you know. Nobody thought I was going to win it. They saw this guy, he ran 46 1 a couple of times, but now he's with the big guys. You know, Mike Larrabee was there, Eulis yeah, Williams. I remember Mike running, you know. And, you know, all those guys from the 64 Olympics. I just wiped them out, man. And in, in the semifinal, I broke the competition record. I ran 45 6 for 440 yards. For meters, it was like 45 3. Right. So I'm, I'm, I beat my best time by oh, by a half a second in the semifinal. And for the final, um, I won it in 45-8. Theron Lewis from Southern University is supposed to have been the best guy there because all those 64 guys didn't make the final. Uh, Olin Castle was there also. Okay. Did Olin, I think Olin made the final, but he, we, he, we just beat him up. And... Uh, so after you win, they, 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 they held you up if, if you were first. So they took me to this table, about four people were in the table. Okay, where are you going to go this summer? I said, well, I'm going, uh, you know, I thought that was an art quest. I'm going to San Jose, you know. They said, oh, no, you're a national champion. You can, you, have a, you can go to London, Paris, Brussels, Switzerland, and Austria. I said, I want to go to all. <laughs> so, so every summer, all through my, you know, through university and after university, I went to Europe and I ran races. It was fun. Well, another thing, without, of course, you, you had the opportunity to be there. But, of course, we all, all we would get is reports and that. But how big at that time was track in Europe? Europe was big and uh, huh. that's why I loved it so much. Track was important. In, in Europe, especially Germany, I loved the run in Germany. And they loved you, the, the athletes, the athletes compete. It, the, uh, uh, I would say, in terms of sports, it was, soccer was number one. Then cycling and running were like number two. Okay. You know? And, you know, they would uh, give you money under the table. You know, so we were amateurs, we don't supposed to receive money, but uh, Ralph Boston was my mentor. He taught me, you know, he taught me what to do. And he said, don't ever sign your name. You have to sign. Also, for the money they gave you, you know, they didn't give you a lot of money, about maybe $400, $500. So I always signed Jesse Owens, you know, so that um, the, <laughs> so the AAU could, couldn't get you, bust you for taking money. But the Italians would always give you $1,000. Every time I rent Italy, thousand dollars. In Germany, I get about five hundred dollars. 
We call it under the table yeah, because yeah, it was yeah, secret, yeah, you know. Under the table, money. <laughs> <laughs> it was secret. But now, you know, ad track is professional, you know. But what, what they paid us was nothing compared with these guys being now. You know, big shoe contract. But then the, we got money for wearing certain shoes then, too. Puma and Adidas was very big rivals. Okay, I knew Puma was um, yeah. a big guy. Uh, oh, Adidas, Adidas gave more money than Puma, actually. But I was loyal to Puma. And so, after I won the race in Mexico City, they bought me a brand new car, cash and everything. But nothing compared with the guys get now. Yeah. Guys now get about, you know, half a million dollars. Mine just, just change the zeros. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, mine was probably less than $20,000, was nothing. Did, did you ever have the opportunity to run in uh, Russia? Yeah. In the Soviet Union? Yeah. I, we hated that. You know, as American athletes, you know, we had this duel with USA versus right. Russia. I remember, I remember those. And USA versus Poland. And one year we go there, and one year they come here. When you go there, they try to poison you before the race. So we used to get, take a lot of sardines and crackers. <laughs> and, yeah. you, you, knew, you knew what was coming. <laughs> oh, man, they put a lot of oil on the food. I mean, it was, this was a big competition. You know, USA versus Russia. You know, the, the Cold War was on. And they wanted to win, you know, and they, they kept points total and, and men and women team. And, and the women, they, they were men. <clears throat> the first time I went, <clears throat> I didn't take any food, but you know, then you, you end up, you have diarrhea, you're trying to run the 400 meters and squeeze your cheeks at the same time. You know, so the time, but I, you know, the Russians wasn't good 400 meter runners. I could beat them with, with the flu. Well, you know, I, Time slips by, and I can't always think of the years and that. But when you ran internationally, uh, and we talk about Russia, of course, Ralph Boston always comes up in the long jump. It was he? Was, yeah, was Ralph you, was there. Were right. you on the same team? Teams, yeah. Oh. The first time I went to Europe, uh, I was sitting next to Ralph Boston. I couldn't believe it. You know, it's a guy. I was in high school. I was reading about it. I saw him jumping in rest course relays. I, God, I couldn't be down. I'm sitting next to Ralph Boston, flying to Europe. You know, yeah. and and then I, you know, when I won the, the national championship, my high school coach always told me that I could be Olympic champion. I didn't believe him. Me and my friend, we used to go around the corner and just laugh. Oh, this, oh, yeah. dude, this crazy <laughs> coach, you know. Then those well, teachers don't lie to you. <laughs> then when I won the national championship the first time, we're flying back to San Jose in the airplane. But I'm sitting next to the coach. I said, Coach, if this was Olympic year, would I be on the Olympic team? He said, yeah. He said, you beat everybody in America. I said, whoa. You know, that was a big, you know, light bulb going off my brain. I said, wow, I can't make the Olympic team. But, you know, I knew, I learned later, you have to earn it. You have to run that race that oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah. That run. day. Yeah. So the Olympic trials to me was, it was more tension than the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games was easy for me. Cause yeah. I don't know, it wasn't easy, but I, I know what you I didn't have to run against eight of the seven other Americans. Right. I just had to run against two Americans. I, I know and exactly. And Americans, what you know, we were deep in the four hundred. So it was it was easier. You never know who's going to run or just going to just blow one out. You know. We we uh, that's interesting you say that because back then we always felt the four forty or the four hundred meter was our race. Oh yeah, we, we always won. We always won it. Never yeah. it just year after year, Olympic after Olympic. We we yeah, always yeah, won yeah. that race. We well, always win the four by four too. Right. Well yeah, it'd be the same. Yeah. Uh, we always won that. So I I was uh, fortunate to be able to go to Europe and travel with Ralph Boss. Ralph Boston would tell me how to what to tell the guy you want this much money and yeah, you know, don't sign sign this, this certain way. He, he was your mentor on oh, that. Oh, huh? he taught me. Else, I would have I'd have came home with no money. But Ralph, he took interest in me. He had a film of me running in the California State Meet when I was uh, seventeen, my, in '64. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was there and he filmed it. He said, "That's you right there." I went to his house in Nashville, Tennessee, one time. Yeah, he's from Tennessee. Yeah, he? Tennessee. and then he showed me. He said, "That's you." I said, "That's true. I remember that race, you know. Oh, we are. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. But I can remember the long jumper in, in, in Russia, Igor Terry Johansson. Yeah, he and yeah, yeah. Igor Terry Johansson. Yeah. So, fellows yeah. that competed. Uh, yeah, Ralph was a great guy. He jumped. You know, he won the gold in 
1960. Right. He won the silver in 64. He won the bronze in 68. I think three, he made three, the I three think, Olympics. Yeah, yeah, I think he made the team in seven too, but he didn't make win the medal. Okay. I'm not sure. I know he was trying to, but you know he was just old oh, man. His knees was bothering. Well, what, wasn't it Ralph Boston's record that uh, Robert Beeman yeah, Bob broke? Beeman. Uh, yeah, yeah. That really annihilated it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was uh, Ralph Boat broke Jesse Owens' world record in oh, 1960. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jesse Owens had the world record for about for about. You know, from from 1936 to 1960. Okay, that's 24, 24 years. years. Yeah. And Ralph broke it. Well, your record in the uh, 400 meter lasted what? 20? 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Our four by four relay record stood for 23 years. Okay. You know, but that to, that to me is remarkable, especially you take that time span. Mm -hmm. I can remember you running and and but the. I don't, I don't think people really realize, this is my opinion, how great mm -hmm. that was to think that you, you set a record in that race that lasted for uh, yeah, 20, 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. That to me is just Yeah, I was proud of that achievement, you know. Remarkable. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, in, in 1988, man, these guys, uh, big guys, you know, we didn't lift weights back in those days. The difference, yeah. I yeah. know what you mean. So these guys were, yeah. we weighed about 160, these guys were in 190, big old muscles everywhere. And, uh, you know, they started running faster. Yeah. That, 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 that was a noticeable change, you know, what you're talking about. And the, the structure of the, of the body, yeah, the yeah, body yeah. changed. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, you know, Tommy Smith, he was 6'4", he only weighed 165. Yeah. You know, just, if, if Tommy would have lift weights, I believe he could be doing what Usain Bolt is doing now. Okay. Because mm -hmm. when Tommy would run the 100 meters, he ran, he would run like 10-1. But in the first 30 meters, he's 7 meters behind everybody. But by the time they reach 90 okay, meters, man, here he yeah. comes, but he's coming like this. <laughs> and, you know, oh, it was phenomenal yeah. how he would... You would think he has no way he's going to come, but as soon as those long legs get going, man, he started eating up the ground. But if he did lift the weights, he'd have power to get out. Get out mm -hmm. right, right away. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you know, speed is power. Power is speed in athletics. And uh, But, you know, Bud, his, Bud didn't believe in lifting weights. He thought the weight was make us tense. Yeah, that tense philosophy, that, that, mm -hmm. that thinking back then was a mm -hmm. restriction, that weights mm -hmm. restrict people. And, uh, no, but it's they, not true. They didn't understand the science aspect, scientific yeah. aspect of weight, weight training. And uh, it was, to them, it was weight lifting, not weight training. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, uh, yeah. Terminology. But, uh, but Lee, if you look at your whole career, and you take it as a track run. What what was probably your highlight of, of, of your career? You know? I tell you what, in 1968, Larry James at the pin relays ran 43.9 on his relay leg, and okay. and just brought Villanova from like 25 meters down, and to catch him one the race. Everybody just went crazy in Pennsylvania. They thought it was the greatest thing they ever saw. So Dutch warmer them. You know, he was the he was the Olympic pole water yeah. at one time, you yeah. know, back yeah. in the thirties or forties. And he he was the meat director for the West Coast Relays, and he and Bud was friends. So I think Bud got him to invite the Villanova team to come to the West Coast Relays. You know, and, and to so that we would could, you know, be a big matchup. So he bought he brought in Kansas and Villanova. Uh, Kansas and Villanova was going to run a 4x8 because Jim Ryan was on the Kansas team right. and Dave Patrick was on the Villanova team. But was that to your, uh, was it Paul Drayton? No, 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 Paul Drayton. He was 64. But, okay. He was, he's older than us. And, um, oh, it was... I had about three weeks advance notice that Villanova was coming, and I'm going to run against this Larry James for the first time. I never ran against him before. And John Collins and Billy Gaines, they're from the East Coast. You know, these are guys that were on uh, my team who, who were from the East Coast. Oh, Larry James is going to whoop your butt. <laughs> Larry James is going to do this, you know. 
I said, okay. So my problem was that we had a 309 team, and Villanova had run 306. So I'm pumping my guys, man. Oh, okay. I'm pumping these guys for three weeks. Just keep it close, keep it close. I, you guys give it, you guys give me 10 yards. I said, I'll catch him. You know, I, I you know. It was, we was going to my hometown. So, so you always ran that anchor. Yeah, I always ran anchor. I told you guys, keep it close. You know, keep me close. Because I couldn't see how, how this guy was going to beat me. But everybody, a lot of people thought he would. He would. Oh, he ran 43 now. You know, I never ran that fast before. But, shit, man. My guys, they gave it to me about six meters down. You know, it's close, man. It's just right over right there. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just wiped him out, man, you know. Yeah, okay. And I could have, you know, you know, I know you, you, and when you race, you have to be smart. You know, right, I was. There's an intellect to, to yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. I know so exactly I, I, what you mean. I was up enough where I knew, and I had been in my room all day. I focused. I did visualization all day. I was in my, I didn't leave my hotel room except to go eat lunch or breakfast. And at 200 meters, I got, you know, he's in lane one. I came, you know, I, he's right here. My shoulder, my left shoulder was next to his left shoulder. I said, and, and I had the legs, man. I could have passed him right there, but. I said, I'm going to really make these people excited <laughs> in this stands. <laughs> put, put, put on a show, Ollie. <laughs> so I came alongside him. So we running around this curve step for step, the third, the second curve. People was going crazy. They thought I couldn't pass him. You were on the outside. Yeah, I'm on the outside. <laughs> I'm lane two, man. man I, had to, I, was still, I was still in third. And I got a, a four-gear transmission. And I was going around that curve in third, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be got one more gear to get it into. Oh, okay. We came into the straightaway, man. I put it in fourth. I beat him by about 78 meters. Yeah. And my leg was 44.9. And I guess they say he ran 45, 3 or 4. Yeah. You know. But it was a dirt track. When he ran that 49 in Penn Relay, it was on a synthetic track. But, oh, first of my life. People came out of the stands. They picked me up, Pick you up on the shoulders and took me around about halfway around the track. I, I you you ran that. a victory lap on their shoulders. Yeah, oh, that was the most. And I saw people I hadn't seen since I was in. We left Fresno when my second year in high school. I saw some of my classmates from that time. I had never seen them. I haven't seen them since. I haven't seen them before they put me on their shoulder. <laughs> and and no, I haven't seen them since they, they did that. But that was amazing to that, me. That's great. And that's to, so great. to me, that was the, in my heart and for me, that was my most mm -hmm. satisfying victory was that four by four yeah. relay. Yeah, I, if, I, if I feel bad about myself, I'll think about that race and I'll feel better. Yeah. Feel better, yeah. The, the, meaning, the meaningful times that, yeah, that, that yeah, one goes yeah, through. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting you mentioned them. Uh, we mentioned these names and the schools, but probably a lot of people don't realize how how good at uh, Villanova was. Yeah, track. yeah. yeah. What John Boy Elliott yeah, was a famous coach, you know. Right. Yeah, that, that, that was his name. I remember the first time I saw Larry James run. I went went to the Milrose games in in Madison Square Garden right. in New York. The old indoor. The, the indoor. You know. I won the six hundred. And Larry James won the five hundred. I said, "This guy is smooth. Look, yeah, nice." Just, I was. It was nice. So I was enjoying watching him run, and it dawned on me: this guy's running the five hundred. What he's going to run outdoors? So I jumped. Jumbo and I knew each other. I think he was one of the teams that we went to Russia or somewhere. So I knew him. I said, "Jumbo, what is this guy going to run uh, outdoors?" He winked at me and walked away. I said, "Oh." Okay. <laughs> so I increased my training. Got your work cut off. This is nothing compared with what they do now. I think I was doing 25 sit-ups every day. I'd start doing 30. 30. No. I was doing 25 push-ups every day. I did 30, just to prepare for Larry James because I saw he was a beautiful runner. That's nothing. You know how many? I tell my athletes today to do 500 
Uh, you can alternate between crunches, sit-ups, and, and, you know, I just did 30. And most other guys didn't do any. Yeah, the difference in training was yeah. that how much. Oh, 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 man. If, if, God, if I was 19 now, i run 43, no problem. But you mentioned the Milrose games. Of course, that was always a big meet in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure when, when they uh, quit running the uh, Knights at Columbus meet in Cleveland, but that was yeah, another I, I ran that one time. Okay. Uh, I, I, I used to go up and, okay. and watch, watch a few of the I ran there meets. once. Yeah. I won there. I think I ran the 400 there, I think. You know, if you run the 400 indoor, just get in the front, nobody can pass you. I was amazed <laughs> at the track they would put up, around, you know, that you guys yeah, had yeah. to run on. Uh, Wooden uh, track, uh, boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> and you yeah. banked the yeah. back yeah. at the end with yeah. the bank and that. Oh, that was interesting. Well, Lee, you know, it, look back, I, you, you certainly had a, a great career running. Yeah, I thank God for my talents. I thank God for allowing me to be the, the athlete, be the best that I could be, you know. My mother was really proud of me. When, when I was young, after I won the Olympics, I was really proud. Cause, so I asked my one of my older brothers, I said, well, were you at home when you guys watched the Olympics on TV? He said, yeah, I was there. We call her my mother doll. Her name was Pearly May. We, called, we didn't call her mom, we called her doll, D-O-L-L. -L. Okay. And, and uh, I said, what did doll say when I went? She said that she was crying and she said, uh, he came from me. i never forget that. Yeah. You know, so. It was I, little, little things you never forget. Yeah, I was really man. proud. My, my brother, he remembered that. And he said that before the race, he commented to my mother, it looks like Lee's talking. My mother said he's praying. My mother, she knew me very well. And sure enough, I was praying. I wasn't praying to win. I never prayed to win. I always prayed that I could do my best and I didn't get injured. Right. Yeah. You know, so I always tell my, as a coach, I told my athletes, you don't pray to win. I said, that, why should God favor you over this other guy? There's seven other guys. So, I, you know, I figured that much out, you know, right away that I, I never prayed to win. I always prayed that I do my best and I don't get injured. Well, that's when I, as a coach, uh, that, that was my prayer, that the kids could play well and, and no one gets hurt. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. a fear of, as a coach having one of your uh, yeah. young athletes. So. Well, Lee, I look at uh, your career and I think track has been good to you, but Lee, I, I think you've been awfully good to track. And I good, think I good, have good also. To the, yeah, I, I, lo I loved it. Um, I've coached all around the world. I met wonderful people, and I'm very happy about it. But you know, I listen to your career moves and how the, you've been able to travel the world, mm -hmm. both as a you know mm -hmm. as an athlete and as a coach, and have the exposure to so many people and to be mm -hmm. known all over the world. Well, you know, I'll be going to South Africa in June, starting a new okay. job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I go, it's going to be on the Eastern Cape. This is where Nelson Mandela was from. And we're going to travel to all the towns and cities in the Eastern Cape. Then I think we're going to go to Mozambique okay. and Angola and do the same thing. Well, I have a, I'm with a group of businessmen and other cultural people who just make a presentation to, to different towns and um, work with, I'll work with kids in athletics. Show them, I'll show them technique drills and introduce them to athletics because a lot of kids in these small towns has never had even had to experience yeah don't, they, they, mm -hmm. they haven't been exposed to mm -hmm. yeah. so much no? mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that well Lee it's been a pleasure having you here and getting a chance to it was nice to chat meet you. and oh, I, I, I mean, now I you know I've gotten to know the person that I used to watch and mm -hmm. read about running and that but mm -hmm. uh, it's sure been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming back here and helping out at the oh, yeah, conference. Yeah, and, uh, yeah Gerard uh, uh, Kendays is, I consider a friend. Well, yeah. I'm considering you a friend also. Yeah, he's a superintendent, and I appreciate that. Yeah. But, uh, same here. So. Hey, bud. All Good right. luck. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Very nice.